Hello everyone, welcome to Talent Sprint. So in this series of biology lessons, we shall deal with the topic called blood. Moving on to the topic called blood. So you can see in this picture, it is a blood vessel. It has a white blood cells in the uh, as it is white in color. It has platelets which are useful in the uh, the clotting of blood. Next is red blood cells in the red color and plasma. Okay, plasma contains the fluid part of the blood. Moving on to the blood. So blood, why it is used? What is the use of the blood? It is used to transport substances like digested food from the small intestine to the other parts of the body and it carries oxygen from the lungs to the cells of the body. And it also transports waste from the body from small intestines to other parts of the body that is food. What is carried out? That is food from lungs to other parts that is cells again it carries O2 again from lungs it carries CO2 also right yes or no from the other parts of the blood the CO2 is collected it is collected through the lungs and the CO2 comes out of the lungs so these are the three major uses of blood in the human body what are the components of blood the first is plasma the next is red blood cells and the next is white blood cells and next is platelets we shall deal with about these four components of bloods in detail the first is so you can see these are the red blood cells and these are white uh, platelets and these are white blood cells and this is the plasma which is the liquid part of the blood and this is a blood vessel generally we have arteries and veins as blood vessels okay the two types of blood vessels next moving on to the first one that is plasma and plasma is a straw colored viscous liquid containing nearly 55 percentage of the blood so how much percentage of blood is present in plasma only 55 percentage of the blood and 90 to 92 percentage of the plasma is water okay out of you if you take the plasma only 90 to 92 percentage of the plasma is water and remaining it has protein so if you take the total blood out of total blood how much is plasma 55 percentage is plasma and in plasma 90 to 92 percentage is water only so remember this is very important in plasma 90 to 90 percentage of plasma is water and remaining it has proteins what are those proteins fibrinogen globulinins and albumins are the major proteins let's discuss about them in detail now fibrinogens are needed for clotting or coagulation of blood so what is this clotting or coagulation clotting means it is the aggregation of the proteins that is particularly fibrinogens to stop the blood flow outside the body okay that is called clotting to stop the blood flow outside the body the blood needs to be clotted or coagulated next globulins primarily involved in defense mechanisms to fight with the diseases like antibodies and albinums increase in osmotic balance like temperature etc next moving on Plasma also contains small amounts of minerals like sodium, calcium, magnesium, etc. Glucose, amino acids, lipids are also present in the plasma as they are always in the transit. Transit means in movement. Factors for coagulation or clotting of blood are present in the plasma in inactive form. Okay, plasma is very useful for the clotting of blood. Plasma without the clotting factors is called as serum. This is also very important. Plasma without the clotting factors is called as serum. Next, moving on to the red blood cells. The first we have seen about plasma. Next is RBCs. So these are the RBCs. You can look them on the picture. Next, the erythrocytes. RBCs are also called as erythrocytes. Are the most abundant of all the cells. Most abundant means widely found in the blood. A healthy adult man has an average of 5 million to 5.5 million of RBCs in the per millimeter cube of blood. Okay, and RBCs are formed, this is per millimeter cube, 
and RBCs are formed in the red bone marrow in the adults. And RBCs are divided off nucleus in most of the mammals and are biconcave in shape. You know, right? Biconcave. This is called biconcave. Okay. They are divided off nucleus, whether it is nucleus present or not, they are present. And they have red colored iron containing complex protein called hemoglobin. This is very important. Hence the color and name of the cell. So red color is given to the RBCs by hemoglobin. He means iron, yes or no? He means iron. As they have no nucleus, remember RBCs have no nucleus. So they can pro produce or contain more hemoglobin. And RBCs transport oxygen for aerobic respiration. Aerobic means in the presence of O2. They must be able to absorb oxygen in the lungs, pass through narrow blood vessels and release oxygen to the respiring cells. So oxygen is carried out from the lungs to the various cells by the RBCs. RBCs have an average lifespan of how much days? It is only 120 days. They have shorter lifespan in which after which they are destroyed in the spleen which is the graveyard of RBCs. Next, moving on to the third component of blood that is white blood cells. So these are the white blood cells you can see on screen, WBCs. Next, they are also called as leukocytes. Erythrocytes are RBCs, leukocytes are white blood cells. They are colorless. Remember they are colorless. Are red blood blood cells have red color because of hemoglobin and white blood cells are colorless. Uh, they are nucleated. They have nucleus. Not like RBCs. RBCs doesn't have nucleus and are relatively lesser in number which uh, averages to 6000 to 8000 millimeter per millimeter cube of blood. This is a volume. Leukocytes are generally short lived. We have two main categories of WBCs, granulocytes and agranulocytes. Neutrophils, isnophils and basophils are different types of agranulocytes while lymphocytes and monocytes are the agranulocytes. Neutrophils are the most abundant cells in the granulocytes of the total WBCs and basophils are the least among them. And neutrophils and monocytes are phagocytic cells which destroy the foreign organisms entering the body. What is the main use of white blood cells? They fight against diseases. Okay. They improve our immune system. Basophils secret histamine, serotonin, heparin and involved in inflammatory reactions. And isnophils resist infections and are also associated with allergic reactions. Lymphocytes are of two major types, B and T form. Both B and T lymphocytes are responsible for immune responses. Overall you can say WBCs are for our immune system. So these are neutrophils, isnophils, basophils, monocytes and lymphocytes of the white blood cells which are short lived. They have nucleus. They are also called as leu leukocytes. Next moving on to the fourth component of the blood that is blood platelets. Platelets are also called as thrombocytes. These are cell fragments produced from megakaryocytes, special cells in the bone marrow. You, right? Hope you know about bone marrow. Blood normally contains 1,50,000 to 3,50,000 platelets per millimeter cube of the blood. Okay, platelets can release a variety of substances mostly involved in the coagulation. I have already told you platelets and plasma are very important for the coagulation that is clotting of the blood so that blood doesn't flow out of the body. Next moving on to the blood groups. So as you know blood of human beings differ in aspects though it appears to be similar. Though everybody's color of the blood is red um, when we see from outside but it be it has various blood groups. So types of grouping of blood has been done. These are the two groupings. The first is ABO and next is RH grouping which is widely used all over the world. The first is ABO grouping. It is based on the presence of or absence of two surface antigens. That is the chemical that can induce immune response on the RBCs namely A and B. These are the antigens. 
the plasma of different individuals contain two natural antibodies produced in response to the antigens so you can see this is a blood donors and blood recipients so who are universal recipients and who are universal donors can you tell me universal donors who are universal donors O group people so that's why they can give blood to everyone and who are universal acceptors the AB group people that's why they can take blood from everyone so A can give blood to only A either A positive or A negative and B can give only to B yes and universal donors are O group and universal acceptors are AB group okay and the next type of the blood groups is RH grouping this is a very rare group the RH antigen similar to one present in rhesus monkeys that's why its na name is RH okay it is also observed on the surface of RBCs of majority of 80 percentage of humans such individuals are called as RH positive and those whom this antigen is absent it is called as RH negative this is very rare blood okay moving on to the blood vessels I've already told you there are two types of blood vessels namely arteries and veins you can see the thicker ones is artery and the lighter one is veins moving on to the veins these are the blood vessels that carry CO2 rich blood you remember veins means they carry CO2 rich blood from all the body parts back to the heart so all the body parts will release CO2 which is not useful and from the heart it is pumped to the lungs and from the lungs it is exhaled outside so understood now so all the body parts the CO2 is sent out to the heart and heart pumps to the lungs and this CO2 will be exhaled from the lungs and the exception is pulmonary vein it is an exception as it carries O2 rich blood remember pulmonary pulmonary means it is opposite as veins carry CO2 rich blood pulmonary vein carries O2 rich blood which is pure blood from lungs to the heart I will show you the picture and veins have very thin walls thin walls next arteries the opposite of veins they carry O2 rich blood which is pure blood and what is the exception again pulmonary artery is the exception as it carries CO2 rich blood from the heart to the lungs okay and the arteries have thick walls okay arteries if you compare arteries and veins they carry O2 rich blood they carry CO2 rich blood but pulmonary artery carries CO2 rich blood but pulmonary veins carry O2 rich blood and they have thick walls and they have thin walls so understood what is the difference between arteries and veins and arteries divide into smaller vessels on reaching the tissues they divide further into extremely thin tubes called capillaries and these capillaries join up to form veins which empty into the heart so you can see the, here is the human body circulation from this is the heart and this is the lungs okay so arteries carry O2 rich blood and vena, veins carry CO2 rich blood from heart to the other body parts O2 is carried from the heart and from other body parts CO2 is carried by the veins to the again heart and pulmonary artery is an exception it carries CO2 rich blood back to the lungs and pulmonary vein is an exception it carries O2 rich blood from lungs to the heart so understood so this is the artery which has thick walls and this is the veins because blood is pumped it should be having some vessels inside so that it should withstand that pressure so hope you have learned enough things in this topic called blood we shall meet in the next topics thank you